With this summit, we seek to strengthen bipartisan support for human rights and hope to create consensus behind concrete solutions and to build momentum for change. I couldn't be more excited to get started, so let's get started. I am delighted to join Human Rights First in welcoming human rights defenders from around the world. Any leader, when they have a chance to deal with China, have to insist on human rights. Human rights either comes first or doesn't come at all. By taking these bold steps and, 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 and demanding universal respect for universal values, the United States can achieve much more. People who are the most deserving of asylum uh, often are people that have the least documentation, that they have the least ability to defend their, their right to be here because they were persecuted. Refugees who come to our shores as, because we're an open, compassionate society have played an incredible role in the development of our own country and sends a signal of human rights around the world. A special thanks to Human Rights First, not just for tonight, uh, but for the work you do each and every day to encourage all of us to live lives of purpose, integrity, and values. I will never forget the role that Human Rights First, and Elisa in particular, played in the fight to end the cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment of detainees during the previous administration. Now, more than ever, we need you. America needs you. I need you. We need you to be our moral compass. I think the business community and the private sector is another form of advancing human rights, communicating democratic values, advancing the national interests of this country. Is there more to be done? Well, I would bet that you have an answer to that question. And so do we, absolutely. Your work matters immensely. You matter immensely. We in the administration are often moved by your work and we are always informed by it. I also feel like this is a tribute not just to the people who are talking about human rights in Bahrain, but to human rights defenders all across the Middle East and North Africa region, who long before these revolutions happened were putting their lives on the line to try and create the change that we're witnessing today in the region. There's an idea that, that's floating around these days. It's a very beautiful idea. You can imprison the revolutionary but you cannot imprison the revolution. You can imprison the human rights defender, but you are only creating a path for hundreds of new human rights defenders. And that is what we will continue to do. Thank you very much.